This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Radio Show. Today, the good news and bad news about taxes. And you'll find out this is part of a, part of a four-part series because it's tax time again. And if you're going to pay taxes this year, listen to these four series now. So next year, you may not have to pay taxes legally. Because if you're paying taxes, you got bad advice. <clears throat> you got very bad advice. Because as you know, the rich pay as little tax as possible. So um, a four-part series, we, ha we have businesses. This is kind of the asset column here. We had real estate with Ken McElroy, how debt and taxes make the rich richer. We had paper with Andy Tanner and John McGregor on stocks, 401ks, mutual funds, IRAs. And then today, my favorite subject, commodities, gold, silver, oil, and Bitcoin. Now, all you Bitcoin fanatics out there, and probably most of you are pretty young, this would be a good time to learn about taxes before the government, Uncle Joe Biden and Kamala and uh, who was it? Yellen, <clears throat> Secretary of Treasury, and the Fed take your money from you because they're after Bitcoin big time. You know, they, they, I can't believe it. Janet Yellen, the secretary treasurer, former head of the Federal Reserve Bank says, oh, Bitcoin is used by criminals. I'm going, well, so is the US dollar. <laughs> you know, give me a break. <laughs> but whenever I hear them bad mouthing Bitcoin and I own Bitcoin, is they're after you guys. So <clears throat> one way they're gonna get your money is the same way they got Al Capone it wasn't for bootlegging, they got Al, Al Capone on taxes. And so I always remember taxes, the number one most important thing in your financial education. Of course, they don't teach you that at school. So it's a four part series. Again, this is the part four, first was business, real estate paper, and now commodities. And commodities are at the bottom, but they're really the most important because you know I have lots of gold, I have lots of real silver, I don't have any paper. I don't like ETFs <clears throat> and I have oil and I have Bitcoin. So today we're gonna to be talking about taxes on that. But the reason this is important is the dollar, which is paper, is fake. And you know, the, the, as we're, today is about March something 2021 and Uncle Joe Biden again are trying to raise another 1.9 trillion in fake money. Now, every time they print money, the poor get poor. You know, so they all get happy. Oh, Uncle Joe and Janet and Kamala are going to give me money. But you're going to get poor because your dollar is worth less. And then they go, oh, yeah, you, I'll get my $1,400 stimmy chuck and I'll play on Robin Hood and go after GameStop or whatever you guys do. That's stupid. That's really, really stupid. So if they're going to give you free money, do something with it. So buy some gold, silver, Bitcoin, or oil. So today, again, it's a four-part series. Is, is my personal tax advisor, Tom Wheelwright. He's the author of Tax-Free Wealth. And uh, we're going to talk about gold, silver, oil, and Bitcoin. So welcome to the program, Tom. Thanks, Robert. Always good to be here with you. Yeah, so I, and I, I want to plug this thing here. I mean, I can't believe it. It's actually readable. <laughs> Tom sent me this wonderful document here, you know. Generally, whenever Tom sends me a tax notice from the... Uh, Department of the Treasury, Internal Revenue Service. I don't need I don't need sleeping pills. I just fall right asleep. But this thing is pretty good. I can read it, and it's about. It says <clears throat> the Internal Revenue Service is aware that virtual currency. See, you Bitcoin guys, you, they got you got Target on your back now. They know you got some money, and they want it. So anyway, Tom will make this available to you. I suggest you, you get it. There's all the highlights here, what you can and cannot do with virtual uh, currency, Bitcoin. I have Ethereum also. I like the stuff. And those people who hate it. Well, that's life. So, Tom, um, you know, virtual currency or Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that's a big news. What do you see while reading these wonderful documents, which you can go to your website at, what's your website again? Wealthability.com wealthability.com. So all you guys out there who are criminals on Silk Road with Bitcoin, get this document. <laughs> I'm only kidding. 
So Tom, what, what is IRS saying about virtual currency? Well, they say a couple of things uh, that I think is really important. First of all, um, that any time you use or trade your virtual currency, that's a taxable transaction. So, I mean, let's let's give an example. Let's say that Bitcoin became a you know normal trade. You go buy groceries. When you bought groceries with Bitcoin, that would be taxable because it would be considered a trade for Bitcoin for US dollars. So every time you spend Bitcoin, every time you sell Bitcoin, that's all of that is taxable. And here's the thing. So on your tax return now, there is a box you have to check to say, did you trade Bitcoin? Well, that means, did you do anything other than just buy it? Okay, if you bought it, you don't have to mark that box, but any other use of it, you have to mark that box. If you don't mark that box, Robert, it's a felony. This is, this is not a civil penalty. Most things on a tax return are just civil penalties, right? They're just, okay, I paid the penalty, get my wrist slapped and, uh, and, and I go on my way. Not with this one. This is a felony. They will come after you if you uh, don't mark that. And in fact, you should have marked it. Trust me, they are coming after, I mean, us, because I've done very well with Bitcoin and Ethereum, but Tom knows my tax strategy. I buy, but I never sell. And if I paid somebody in Bitcoin, what would happen then, Tom? That would be taxable. So if you, if you pay them, the person I pay, it'd be taxable both for you and for the person you pay. That's right. So as long as, as long as I'm buying my Bitcoin after I paid all the taxes, which I don't pay anyway, and I store the Bitcoin into my, uh, asset column and it sits there. It's like my gold and silver, right? As long right. as I'm not using it, it's not taxable. It's actually just like the gold and silver. So the same thing would happen if you went and used silver or, or you know, silver or gold to buy something, that would be a taxable transaction too. So it's very similar to gold and silver. Uh, the one difference is, is that if you hold Bitcoin for over a year, you do get capital gains rates. So you get to tax that at 15% or 20% instead of ordinary income. Gold and silver have a different tax rate than that. So you just, that's the one primary difference between the two. Again, I wanna talk about this. This is a document. Go to, what's your website again, Tom? Wealthability.com. And in here are all the things you wanna know. All you new Bitcoin billionaires or soon to be billionaires. You wanna know what to do before you do something stupid, like spend it. So, um, so what else would you want to say about Bitcoin or crypto? Well, it, th there's, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of the, the issue that I think people have is tracking it. Um, you know, I mean, the whole goal for Bitcoin is not to be tracked, but the reality is, is that if you ever were to start to use it or when you trade it, you do have to track that and you do have to report that just like you were, if you were trading stocks or foreign currency, something like that. So, you know, the compliance part of it, I think is the most, one of the most difficult parts of Bitcoin is you still have to comply just because it's not a, a, a real, it's not a foreign currency, just because it's not the US dollar, just because it's not a stock doesn't mean you don't have to report that transaction on your tax return and pay tax. And I think that's the most important thing. I think people miss that all the time, that they need to know that they're in big trouble if they don't report this correctly. The IRS will come after them. Well, not that I'm suggesting this, but isn't one of the pitch points, one of the reasons for buying Bitcoin is the government can't track it? That, that is the, that's one of the pitch points. Okay. So the, the, can they track it? No, they can't right now. And it's a voluntary system, right? All of our, frankly, all of our taxes are a voluntary system. Um, but when they audit you and they ask you that question, if you say no, that's a felony. So just know that you are, you are, um, you are, if they, if they do catch you, you're in pretty big trouble. I think I was laughing about is I see a lot of these real young guys who now become Bitcoin multimillionaires and I watch them on their YouTube podcast and they're sitting in these huge mansions now with, they look like Al, Al Pacino and Scarface or something, you know, these huge dragons and all that around them. So obviously they spent some money, right? <laughs> Well, obviously they did. And the reality is, is that, you know, obviously the IRS is going to 
check on that. And the IRS is doing more and more audits and they're doing more and more audits on cryptocurrency. Here's the thing. People think, well, I'm a Bitcoin and so I'm good, but you only can use that Bitcoin for the most part if you convert it to dollars, right? I mean, it's not like there's a huge market where you, marketplace where you can go out and buy houses using Bitcoin. Most people aren't going to accept Bitcoin in exchange for their house. And so you're exchanging it for dollars. When you do that exchange, that's where the IRS is going to track you. So it's, it's converting it from Bitcoin to something else like dollars, that's where the IRS tracks you and know that that's pretty easy for them to track. So, you know, I, years is when Bitcoin first came out, this guy was selling uh, condos in New York city in the Soho area and they're accepting Bitcoin. So that would be trackable wouldn't it? because you now have a record of the real estate also. Exactly. Cause you have a record of that real estate transaction and you know who the buyers and sellers are. And so, you know, the IRS can be looking at that or the New York state Department of Taxation can be looking at that because New York State's even more aggressive than the IRS and say, well, wait a minute, where's the, where's, where's the gain? You know, where's the reporting on this? So if I, let's say I bought Bitcoin at $10,000 and I buy something for $20,000 using the same $10,000 Bitcoin because it's gone up to, let's say 20, how is that taxed? So you're going to pay tax on $10,000. Right. So um, it's, it's as if you sold it and then used the cash, which, by the way, you probably did in the first place. You probably sold it to get the cash in the first place. Um, and it's uh, like I said, when you're tra when you're exchanging Bitcoin for dollars, that's where the IRS can track you. Good, good. And how, um, as you know, we, I like oil and, you know, and oil is under fire right now because of carbon tax. Right which is good because I'm going to make even more money because I'm going to shift and become a grainy and I'm going to invest in green new energy because I get huge deals for carbon tax now. Of course. Of course. You know, capitalism is wonderful stuff. You just keep moving around out there where everybody else is trying to eat granola and eat asparagus. You know, I'm shifting to a grainy buying carbon tax credits and making fortunes on it because I'm going to buy oil with it. But for years, you know, when you look at this thing here, this is the point of having Tom and his book is Tax Free Wealth and you should have tax advisors. Right. But anyway, I love this here commodities down here because in my opinion, this is where your wealth is stored. So as I, I explained in the last other inter interviews is, you know, I make a lot of money. Kim and I make a lot of money here. Let me show this. So let's say the rich dad company makes $1 million here. And the next thing I do is I give the money to Kenny. So $1 million comes down here and Kenny borrows 4 million of my one. So I've now moved my 4 million over here as five. So one plus four equals five. And that's this other tax, this is, this is part four of a four part series. So please listen to Kenny and Tom and myself and Kim talking about how the entrepreneur like Donald Trump, unlike Hillary and the other characters, I make my money here as a business owner. The money then goes into Kenny who borrows $4 million and we buy $5 million of real estate. How does that save me money to him? Well, so there are major incentives in the tax law for buying real estate, um, investment real estate. So you get the big tax deductions from the real estate that offset the income from the business. So effectively, you end up not paying tax on the business income because you did what the government wanted you to do and put it into real estate. And, and you know very well, Robert, the same thing happens if you put it into oil, right? Or if you put it into solar, you get the same type of tax benefits so that you're not paying tax on your business income or your other income. So, so let me guess, I'm gonna take it to, because this is what we teach through our cash flow clubs. This is advanced tax strategy and real estate strategy. So it's 5 million. Let's say that 5 million property appreciates up to 10 million. I borrow out the five. So I we went from 5 million, it's now worth 10 million. Kenny raises the rents. I pull out $5 million in cash 
Is that tax-free money? That is tax-free money. Uh, debt is not taxable. And with that, I buy Bitcoin. Exactly. So that's how you make your Bitcoin not taxable. Or, uh, you know, the, you have other options too. I mean, you can buy Bitcoin in, for example, you could buy Bitcoin in your Roth IRA. I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do here once you understand the tax law and how the incentives work. See, the problem with most people is when they make some money, they want to spend it. And that's the problem. Oh, I'm a billionaire in Bitcoin, but I can't spend a thing because my capital gains tax will be through the roof. You know, but there's things you can do if you have a great tax strategist like Tom. Now, all the communists and the pinkos and the school teachers out there say, well, that's not fair. Well, that's what Hillary Clinton attacked my friend Donald Trump. She says, you know, you don't pay any taxes. And as Trump said to Hillary, but this is 2016 or whatever it was, that means I'm smart. It just because you make a lot of money and you pay taxes means you're stupid. So my Bitcoin is totally tax-free simply because this is my general policy. I make a million dollars here. It comes down here. Kenny borrows four million. So I have four million in debt and liabilities. We buy a $5 million property. The $5 million property, we raise the rent. It goes up to 10. I borrow out the five and I buy Bitcoin in it. So if you understand that, that's why Donald Trump says that's, that means I'm smart. So just because you're rich in Bitcoin or gold or silver doesn't mean you're smart. So when we come back, we've been talking more with Tom Wheelwright on how commodities are your most important asset, in my opinion. I mean, this is where my wealth is. I don't save dollars. It's just trash. As Michael Saylor says, you know, about Bitcoin is the, the, the dollar is like holding onto an ice cube that's melting in your hand. And they're going to, you know, this is 20, 2021, they're going to print another 1.6 trillion or 9 trillion. I mean, your savers are getting screwed, which means Bitcoin goes up, probably gold and silver goes up through inflation. But just because the product, the commodity goes up doesn't mean you're rich. You still have taxes. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Day Radio Show. The good news and bad news today is about taxes. And if you're paying taxes this year, means you got some bad tax advice. And uh, so this is for next year, because if you're really smart, you can make a lot more money and pay a lot less in taxes legally. And please do it legally, because you don't want to go to jail and dance in a hula skirt. You know what I mean? So <laughs> do it legally. So anyway, our guest today is our, you know, the four, four part series, Tom Wheelwright. He's the author of Tax Free Wealth. I mean, he is, I, mean, I was, Tom's an A student. I was a C minus student along with Kenny McElroy. We're not the brightest matches in the box, but Tom was. And we always go to him before we make any tax decisions. So uh, Sarah had a question on him because I can tell she's into Bitcoin <laughs> now. So Sarah, what was your question? Well, not anymore. Not after I learned I'm getting taxed up the wazoo. No, um, <laughs> no. My question to Tom during the break uh, was because I use the app Coinbase to track, you know, cryptocurrency purchases and that sort of thing. Um, so I was just curious if Tom was aware of any sort of maybe reporting that these apps are going to have to start doing to the IRS to track these transactions since these transactions are what cause the taxable event. Yeah, there, there's no question that they'll, they'll just like, I mean, if you think back to stock trading, I remember uh, 20 years ago when you had to do your own calculation of your stock trades, right? Whether you had gains, losses, et cetera. And then the, the big brokerage houses, they were required by the IRS to come out with better reporting. And now all you do is you just attach a form to your tax return. Uh, that, the, that the brokerage house sends you. That's going to happen with Bitcoin. That's going to happen with uh, all of the cryptos, all the virtual currencies, because otherwise it's going to be impossible for people to track this. So the IRS is going to require that. I, I'm not sure exactly. I haven't looked this year yet as to, as to what they're requiring for 2020. Um, but we really, uh, we, we know that they will track it. And the other thing we know is that they can regulate, you know, people think Bitcoin can't be regulated. And the way it, it when it's regulated, because it will get regulated, it will be through taxes. OK, because anytime you bring it in or out of the financial system, now they can track it. Now they can require that they can even put a special tax just on virtual currency. So, um, you know, this idea that it can't be tracked is, uh, you know, a little bit of a fantasy. 
Well, you know, Tom, I'm and now that I'm a hardcore Bitcoin fanatic, I listen to all of their banter back and forth on YouTube and they saying, yep. well, the US taxes my Bitcoin, I'm moving to Timbuktu. And doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. But they'll <laughs> That's what that's what I hear on YouTube, or the, the you know they're they're, they're going to run to a country that respects um, crypto and all this stuff. And I, I I listen to the old guys like myself and Jim Records and Jim Rogers, and he says, "Never forget who has the guns." Actually, <laughs> never forget who has the guns. He says, "Remember those guys at Tiananmen Square? They stuck the finger up of the guy and they put a tank and they ran him over." <laughs> you know, they said. And I always remember this, Al Capone wasn't taken down for alcohol, Al, Al Capone was taken down for taxes. And so um, you can say what you like and all this. I'd rather just hire Tom and make a million dollars and pay no taxes. So Tom, tell us one more time where they can get your, your paper from the Internal Revenue uh, Service. Uh, just uh, go to wealthability.com and uh, type in Bitcoin. You'll be able to find uh, this, uh, it's, a, it's an Internal Revenue Bulletin. Yeah, and it's just it's actually pretty easy to read. I read it. It was not bad. But the point here is this. Let me just read it. The Rich Dad philosophy is, I don't, you know, Tom knows I don't have any stock spots, mutual funds, ETF because they're taxable. And I like saving, I don't save money. I save gold, silver, Bitcoin, oil as commodity because it's real. It's based down here. And I just explained to you how I can make a million dollars by a million dollars of Bitcoin and pay no tax. But oil is another one, Tom. So let's say I, I have extra cash here coming from Kenny or however I get it, which is part of the Cash Flow Club series. Let's have a million dollars and I give my money to my friend at, you know, oil company in Dallas. Let's say I give him a million dollars for oil exploration. How much of that money is taxable? Zero. Zero. Um, because uh, if, you, if you have a million dollars, let's say you made a million dollars from your business, and you put that million dollars into oil, you'd get a deduction of a million dollars to offset the million dollars uh, from the business and basically you'd pay no tax. And so it's a tax-free investment. So this is what we teach at Rich Ted. I have a business, you know, I have a number of businesses, but the one people know is Rich Dad. I make a million dollars here. It comes down here to Kenny. He ramps it up to four, 5 million. He has 4 million of debt in it. Is debt tax-free? It is. Yeah, and it comes over here, it comes in as five. Kenny then raises the rents, and let's say the property goes from five million to 10 million. I borrow out the five million, and I buy $5 million with oil. What happens to me then? <laughs> so now, you, now you've got a $5 million deduction. You actually need more income. <laughs> you need more taxable income. At that point, you, you, it's backwards. Now you need to, to increase your business income <laughs> so you can actually use that loss. <laughs> so the other part of it is because I have all this money coming in tax-free because of Tom, I'm stacking up my commodity column here. So my Bitcoin is piling up. I don't need the cash because I'm catching it off of tax-free debt coming off. That's what we teach at Rich Debt. Anybody says go to school, get a job and buy an ETF, you should shoot the bugger. You're lying to me, you're making me pay taxes. Oh, get a, be a hardworking person and you're working for all this money really, really hard and then Biden's gonna print one more $9 trillion. I mean, are you nuts? All, when they print money, your purchasing power of your salary goes down, right Tom? Oh, oh, for sure. That now you, you know you talk about being a greenie and and going that that direction. So remember the same thing that we do with oil and the same thing we do with real estate. Remember all the incentives they're going to go towards green energy. So they're going to go to solar and wind and and uh, whatever kind of green energy they have. There's going to be not right now. We don't just have deductions. We have credits, which is right. a dollar for dollar offset. I mean, this is like nirvana from a tax standpoint, where you can actually make money from the government by investing. So I just I just you know through my friend Marin Katusa. You know, we, I just I just turned bright green. <laughs> you know, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, whatever her name is. I'm now so green, I turn a little like a frog. And because I'm getting carbon tax credits, Tom, what does that mean? 
Well, so so what happens is is that uh, carbon tax credits are credits that that the utility companies and the producers who, who use the carbons, like coal, for example, they can they can trade those. So, for example, in the West, now I was at a public utility for a number of years, their in-house tax advisor, and that's when the carbon taxes started coming up. And so, uh, in the West, they have, for example, really clean coal. In the East, it's really dirty coal. Well, so the the so so my company in the West would sell its credits to the companies in the East and make money just on the credits because they naturally had cleaner coal to begin with. So there's a, there's a market here for, there's always been, and this is something we don't talk about a lot, but there's a market for tax credits, uh, low income tax credit, uh, housing tax credits, um, solar tax credits. There's all sorts of, a mar of markets for tax credits. God bless capitalism. You know what I mean? Just it's so wonderful. And the rich get richer. I mean, that, I mean, yeah, you know, is it fair? No, it's not fair. But it's the law. It's the way capitalism works. Is, is this true all throughout the world, Tom? It, it is. It's, it's really fascinating to uh, just watch how um, when we go to different countries, and of course, I always look at the tax law when we go to the different countries, and they're remarkably similar, uh, the incentives, because they, they all want the same thing. They want cheap energy. They want employment. They want real estate. They want housing. And so they, the way they get their, um, their work done is they use capitalists frankly, to get their work done and they give them small tax incentives so the capitalists put in and risk their money into these uh, projects that the government wants. Yep. So anyway, it's, um, there's a lot to learn. And so anybody who says to you, go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt and invest in the stock market, they're ripping you off. You know, because guys like me just will not do that. And look, I'm saying, God bless a Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. When I first heard that, I went, ooh, she's going to make me a rich man. <laughs> so I invested in the whole, you know, I've made a couple of million dollars on just tax credits this year. And so it's, capitalism is wonderful, except the socialists will never tell you that because they don't know it themselves. Any comments on that, Tom? I mean, what's happening in America today? Is some, I mean, the gap between rich and poor is horrifying. Well, it, it, it is horrifying. And here's the thing is that it's, it's really a gap in education. And, you, you know, as you say, it's a gap in financial education more than anything, because the rich get richer because the government gives them incentives and the poor don't know about those incentives. And so they end up paying all the taxes. You know, Joe Biden says that it, you know, people who make under $400,000 aren't going to pay increased taxes. I'm going, well, that's a, a, kind of a silly statement because it's like the people over 400000 are paying taxes to begin with, right? Because those with good tax advice that, you know, follow the, basically what you're teaching of, of how you use your money and invest in business, real estate, and commodities, they're not paying taxes in the first place. So, so what if it's 400,000? Because we don't have any, like, we don't have any clients that make $400,000 on paper. Um, they, their tax returns are gonna show uh, less than that. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Joe Biden's uh, increasing taxes over 400,000. Entrepreneurs don't pay that. No. And the biggest point here is this, is that when somebody says live debt free, Tom, am I deeply in debt? Very deeply in debt because debt is tax-free money. That's right. If you understand that, that's why our school system, they should be shot at dawn. I mean, well, they're not in school anyway. You know, the school teachers are now in Puerto Rico collecting their PPP checks or whatever they're doing, and their kids are not getting any kind of education. But that's the education system of America. There's no financial education, and that's why we have the Rich Dad Company. That's why we have our cash flow clubs and all this, so that you can understand why the rich are getting richer legally because we're incentives. So Tom, before we go out, can you explain why we're not cheating the government? I mean, you talk about incentives well, and all this. Why am I not cheating the government? So here's what most people don't understand. There's, there's very little of the tax law that actually raises revenue. Most of the tax law is just the government implementing its policies, okay? So if the government wants to create jobs, then it gives tax benefits. I mean, we saw this in the PPP loans, right? That was a good example of that, where the government's saying, well, look, if you can, if you keep paying your employees, we'll pay for that. Okay, that's, it's the same thing. 
Um, most of them aren't direct subsidies like a PPP loan. That was a direct subsidy. Most of them go through the tax law. So if you want to know what your government, no matter where you are, if you want to know what your government wants to have done, wants to have accomplished, look at your tax law. Go to your tax advisor says, what is the, you know, for example, what does the tax law say in my country about uh, developing housing? What do they say about uh, commercial buildings? What do they say about solar energy, you know, solar, solar panels? And what you'll find is, is that most governments are incentivizing uh, certain things that they want to have done because they want the capitalists to put the money, to, to risk the money, and they're willing to take some of that risk off of the capitalists by giving them a tax deduction. And so that's why when I drill for oil, I mean, America is now the so-called in energy independent. If we weren't energy independent due to fracking and how much I, the greenies go nuts, God bless them, but I'm going to get rich because of that. But if we didn't have that, we'd be at war in the Middle East, which we are anyway, because of oil. And so by us, by, by incentivizing people like me to move my millions of dollars into oil, the government gives me a tax break, America becomes energy independent. And then a couple of things. Why did Biden cut down this the pipeline? I mean, what does he have against oil? What's well, that? that was a, I, I think that was part of the, you know, the climate and green and all that kind of stuff. That's what he was after. You know, you're destroying the wilderness and, and so forth. And that's, that's why I cut out that pipeline. And where he wants the incentives to go is to renewable energy. OK, so it's just going to come away from the oil companies. I mean, this is a great thing about capitalism, right? All you have to do is shift your money to where the government wants it to go and you legally still don't pay taxes. But you just have to shift with the government. That's all. Yes. Yeah, so the moment that shut down that pipeline, I got richer because I went to the Green New Deal because I got carbon tax credits. If you understand that, that's the game. But they'll never teach you that in school. Never, 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 never. And that's why it's the gap between everybody, the rich and everybody else is so dangerous now. That's why, you know, I speak, that's why we found the Rich Dad Company. Hopefully some of you will catch on. But what our schools and our communists and our socialists and our, you know, radical left people are trying to tell you is that you're being screwed. Well, they're screwing you. The school teachers are the biggest criminals right now because they're not even in school. They want you to take, what, 20, 25 vaccines or something before they'll come to school. The kids aren't the danger. The teachers are the danger. So our education system is so corrupt. So that was the story of rich dad, poor dad. You know, my poor dad is a very, very good, honest man, but stupid. PhD, poor, helpless, and desperate. He knew nothing about money, but he thought he knew everything. And my rich dad was a man who never went to school. That's why he was so rich. So that's why I've advisors like Tom Wheelwright, that's why with the rich dad radio show, because the government wants you, wants capitalists, wants entrepreneurs to take risk with their money and do what the government wants done. If you wanna see what the government wants done, go to a communist country. For example, I was in Kyrgyzstan and I went into government housing there. Oh my God, you think our slums are bad? You haven't been to a Kyrgyzstan slum. That is amazing. And this guy, young Russian guy, he was so proud there was wife and his two kids. I was terrified just walking in the place, going upstairs. There's no elevator, of course. It's not heated very well. It's dirty coal. You sit there and they it's government housing. And instead in America, in the capitalist society, you know, Kenny and I put up the millions to build the houses, the apartment houses. And that's why, and the government wants us to borrow money because if we don't borrow money, money is not created because money is debt. Is that correct, Tom? No, that, that's exactly right. And, uh, the, you know, the, if, <laughs> the bank doesn't want you want your money unless they can lend it, right? That's why they want your money and because uh, they want to lend as much as possible. And they want that cycle to keep going. Right. And the only way to, to promote that, for one thing, is A, don't tax debt. And, and B, encourage using debt for business and other uh, investments. An another incentive is to pay you nothing for your savings. <laughs> and give me a tax break to borrow money. When are people going to get it? Well, here's the thing. You, you get a tax deduction when you borrow that money because the interest you pay is tax deductible. Yeah. When you use it, 
for investing. If you use it personally, it's not deductible. If you use it for investing, it is. That should tell you something about how the government feels about borrowing money that's good debt instead of bad debt. Yeah. Well, they just want you to get into debt. So otherwise there's no money. In 1971, the US dollar became debt when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. That's right. But they never taught you that in school. Anyway, Tom, thank you very, very much. It's been a great four part series. Once again, how can they get this beautiful document before they become criminals, all you Bitcoin guys? Yes, go to wealthability.com and uh, we'll have it available for you. Okay, man, well, thank you very much. And we'll be right back for a summary of the Rich Dad Radio Show. Thank you, Tom. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about taxes. And if you're paying taxes this year, you've had bad tax advice or you've listened to an idiot. So I want to thank Tom Wheel Wright. He's the author of the book, Tax-Free Wealth. He's a rich dad advisor. He's the reason that my whole, myself, my whole team, we make millions of dollars and pay no taxes legally. And this was especially timely because of Bitcoin. Everybody's into it now. I am too. So anyway, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube, and please leave, leave us a review. We don't make any recommendations. We're not saying to do anything. We're just a pure education company. And if you want to listen to this program again, go to richdadradio.com. We archive everything because repetition is how you learn. Listen to this program a second time. You'll learn more about why the rich are getting richer and everybody else is getting hammered with their free money from the Communist Republic of America, from government money. It's going to make more people poor. But everybody's getting happy because they're getting free money from the government. And meanwhile, I don't know what people are going to do. But anyway... Listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show again at richdadradio.com and have friends, family, and business associates listen to it and discuss it. And I think you'll see a whole different world there. Once again, thank you to Tom. We are a part of a four-part series. So what do you think there, Sarah? This was, um, for me, the most fun tax show we've done for this series. Um, and I think it's only because, you know, Bitcoin's been so hyped up in the media lately. It's growing to all-time highs. So it seems really relevant and exciting. But I think... The thing, the reason why this will be the most important show is there are a lot of amateur investors that have jumped into Bitcoin. I totally understand why. Um, but the cautionary tale here is you don't spend your Bitcoin. Um, you know, so all of these millionaire Bitcoin guys that are, you know, made millions overnight or in the last few months, um, they just have to be careful because the government wants their money. <laughs> And they're going to get their money. So you just have to be careful. I, I won't mention names, but there's a couple of these Bitcoin billionaires, you know. I think they were buying it at 10 cents a coin or something. Mm -hmm. And every, every program I watch them, they're in a bigger house with new furniture and all this. And I, I can see the IRS dragging them off, whether, mm -hmm. whoever they're, wherever they're at. Because the moment they spend that money, always remember that's what got Al Capone. You know, it wasn't alcohol, it was taxes. So that's why you understand what I talk about today. I, all my Bitcoin is tax-free. My oil is tax-free because I have good advice like Tom Wheelwright. And you can do the same thing. So if you're paying taxes, like all you guys hiding out in Puerto Rico, you don't have to do that. You don't have to hang out in Puerto Rico unless you're a criminal or something or you have bad tax advice. I just crack up, I got, I got this, so many guys hiding in Puerto Rico right now. I go, why do you do that? But the reason they hide in Puerto Rico and they can't vote now is because they have poor tax advice. Mm -hmm. So it's really an interesting time. And so that's what Rich Dad stands for. Uh, again, we don't make any recommendations, but please get educated. Please look, look for the best advice. Final word. Final word is uh, I'm glad Tom's making that IRS document available to everybody. So just go to wealthability.com to get it. Um, because one thing that I learned new in there that I didn't know before was that miners, if you're mining Bitcoin, not even selling it, you're just mining it, that is a taxable event as yeah. well. So all you miners out there also have a liability. So the key is to get educated, understand what you're doing. Um, so I thought this was a great show. Yeah, thank you. And again, it's not just one asset. You know, I'm I'm operating on all, but I don't need, I don't have paper. I don't like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or ETFs. But most people should be in it. I, I'm not. But anyway, I just like this because of the tax advantages. So with that, thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. And thanks again once thanks once again to Tom Wheelwright, WealthAbility.com.